Hello, everybody. My topic today is uh, Concorde, the beautiful bird, symbol of French luxury, from the technical myth to the reality of commercial disaster. 1960s, early 2000. Difficult subject. Uh, as we have uh, just uh, celebrated the 50th anniversary uh, of Concorde's first flight, this uh, flight uh, took place uh, in 1969 and uh, with incredible uh, media coverage. And uh, Concorde today remains an icon for many uh, French people. So that's what's a little bit difficult for an historian. There are more than 200 books on the Concorde. Uh, the majority of these books are testimonies of journalists, pilots, engineers, military officers, or enthusiasts. They are not always objective, as you can imagine. Look at the different uh, titles, some of them. Uh, to, um, to the left, you can see Concorde Mon Amour, Concorde My Love. Another example below, La Grande Aventure de Concorde, The Great Adventure of Concorde. Uh, you have this book from André Turca, uh, Chief uh, Test Pilot. Uh, yesterday's Test and uh, Today's Battles, hein, Essai d'hier, Bataille d'aujourd'hui. Concorde, La Légende Supersonique, The Supersonic Legend. Concorde, Le Magnifique. Concorde the Magnificent, Concorde Passion, Concorde La Passion, and uh, you have uh, Concorde La Véritable Histoire, Concorde The True Story, uh, and you have it uh, uh, there in English, Concorde The Inside Story, and of course, last but not least, Concorde and the Americans. Mm -hmm. Because after the, the commercial disaster, uh, the French state needed uh, uh, bad guys, and of course, Americans were the bad guys. But, and interesting, there is not a single book in French about the Tupolev 2144, which was, which was the, the, the great rival of Concorde and which flew uh, before it. So the first flight of the, um, the Tupolev. Uh, uh, was before the first flight of the Concorde, and uh, the same thing for the uh, Mac 1 and Mac 2. Uh, and today, most of the French people, they, they don't want to, to speak about that. They say, yes, yes, but it was uh, the Concorde ski, nicknamed in France of the, uh, the Tupolev uh, 2144, uh, was Concorde ski, uh, due to the spies from Soviet Union, of course. But uh, in fact, as you can see, in this museum. This is the only one museum in the world, the only one place in the world where you can see a Concorde and a Tupolev 2144. They are not exactly the same aircrafts huh? due to this, uh, the famous uh, moustaches mm -hmm, of the Tupolev. So it's a little bit hard to be an historian of Concorde. Mm -hmm. Part one. Symbol of French luxury, vocabulary, pictures, and style. The supersonic, the French supersonic, the French English, or the English French in England, supersonic, was a, a legend uh, due to its speed. The dream of uh, putting New York at three and a half hours from Paris. They have been landing before departure time with the help of jet lag. The Paris-New York flight could take off each morning at uh, 11.15 a.m. and uh, land at 8.41 a.m. in New York, local time, just as offices are opening. Wonderful. After only three hours, 26 minutes of flight time, including two hours, 54 minutes at supersonic speed. To do this, Mach 2 has to be reached i.e. over 2,000 kilometers per hour. 
which literally amounts to putting the passengers in the bullet of a gun. Hence, the vocabulary used to designate it. Concorde, le magnifique, le fantastique, le bel oiseau, etc., etc. And uh, le merveilleux, the wunderbar in German. <laughs> And concorde with the E at the end. It was a, a small victory of the French over the English who had concorde without an E at the end of the world, but it was a long battle. So, Concorde is written on a multitude of stamps, even today, throughout the world. And uh, you can see some of them uh, on this slide. And that's very interesting. Most of them, in that case, are from uh, uh, African French speaking countries like Mali or Togo or uh, Haute Volta, Burkina Faso today, Mauritania, and this one. DPR Korea, that's North Korea, in fact, huh? Democratic, Democratic People's Republic of Korea. And you have a concord on it. That's interesting. And not a twelve. <laughs> and many, many medallions like this one, huh? the last flight of Concorde commemorative medallion. Huh? Farewell and thank you. Adieu et merci. 1969, 2003, the last flight. So, the Aeroscopia Museum in Toulouse is the only one place in the world to present an Airbus A300B and two Concorde. One outside and one inside next to the Airbus. That's very interesting because like that, the styles can be compared, the lines, and you can understand why Concorde is so popular. And uh, the first Airbus, uh, not so popular. <laughs> Look at the line. There is a Concorde, the outside one on the tarmac of the museum, Aeroscopia in Toulouse Blagnac, exactly. The Concorde inside the museum. And there, the first Airbus. The A300B. You understand why this first Airbus uh, was called uh, the Big Co or La Grosse Julie, the Fat Julie. And the Concorde nickname was The Man. It was a little bit macho. Of course, uh, let me come back. And that's terrible. Because uh, today, there is only one A300B in the world. And you can see it uh, in this museum in Toulouse. Come and visit us, please. <laughs> Due to uh, its very uh, flawed lines, uh, you can see a uh, representation of Concorde all over in the world, uh, including in the field of art, sometimes with a discreet or slightly hidden allusion. For example, artist Magnus Thomasson has designed a sculpture located at Keflavik Airport, Iceland, close to Reykjavik, in fact. The name of this uh, sculpture, you can see the airport there, and here is a sculpture. The name of this sculpture is the jet nest, and the bird looks like a concord. In Finland, At Helsinki Airport, the artist Stephen Lindfors is exhibiting a sculpture directly called Concorde. And you have many, many other uh, examples in, uh, in art. Concorde was a movie hero. There is one example of uh, a movie a film, uh, Airport 79, in English or American English, the Concorde Airport 79. Uh, in German, the Concorde, Airport 80. And you have the, uh, the French movie, the same, but in French, 
Airport 80, Concorde. With the very famous uh, actor Alain Delon, French actor Alain Delon, uh, he's the main, uh, with Concorde, he's uh, the main character of the, of the movie. Uh, he's uh, the pilot uh, of uh, the Concorde. Uh, it's, it, it wasn't a very good movie, uh, more uh, what we call a nana in French, uh, and uh, or uh, so bad it's good uh, in English. The Concorde, as you can see, the Concorde is uh, attacked uh, by uh, missiles and uh, uh, manages to, to escape them. Not very realistic. And Concorde was also the small screen's sweetheart. In 1969, uh, the year of the first flight of Concorde, most of the people all over the world uh, so uh, Concorde's first flight uh, live uh, uh, on TV or delayed. Uh, for example, the, the rate of, uh, of a TV equipment uh, reached uh, 66% in, in France uh, in 1969 and uh, more than 90% in, uh, in the US at this time. But there is a dark side, the dark side of Concorde. So I am an historian, I have to speak about that. It's, it's not so nice. Uh, Concorde did not have only qualities. Uh, it was narrow, tight, noisy, inside the plane, but outside too, uh, for the inhabitants under the plane, and consume a lot of kerosene while flying at a very high altitude which was bad for the troposphere. In fact, it was the happy few plane, typically the jet set aircraft. And uh, his story ends with a tragic accident in 2000. And you can see this book there. Uh, this book is from uh, the woman who was the owner of the hotel uh, where, where the, the Concorde uh, crashed uh, in uh, in 2000, sorry. Despite this, it continues to fascinate crowds, especially photographers, we call them spotters, and document collectors around the world. In France, it is still an object of pride, more so than in the United Kingdom. So, even today, it's difficult to write the history of Concorde in a totally free way. particularly when you say that Concorde was also a commercial disaster. When I say that, particularly in Toulouse, my city, uh, uh, I have uh, questions, uh, arguments with uh, different uh, engineers or uh, local historians, and they say, no, it's not true. Uh, uh, it was very important for the progress of technology, etc., etc. But uh, look, 20 copies were produced in two different factories and only 14 were sold. It means seven Concorde uh, by factory. Most experts believe that 1,000 should have been sold to start making money. Worse, Concorde was not profitable in operation after the old shocks of 1973 and 1979 because Concorde could only carry about 100 privileged passengers. It's a one aisle aircraft. You see, you are inside the Concorde of the Aeroscopia Museum in Toulouse-Blagnac. And after that, you can go, in this museum, you can go inside the Airbus A300B. And you have two aisles and you can put two seats and then four seats and two more seats. Uh, that's very interesting for the companies, mm. economically. Mm. In Concorde, each of these uh, passengers could receive a diploma, not in the Airbus. Like this one, you see, Monsieur Mangel Robert a passé le mur du son le 1er octobre 1987 à bord de Concorde. This is a diploma for his or her first flight on Concorde with 
passage of the sound barrier, le mur du son. So it, it's very important. And I know this guy, and uh, he's very proud of this. Something interesting too. 18 out of the 20 Concorde models uh, manufacture uh, are on display in airports and museums. 18 out of the 20. This aircraft retention rate is unique in the world. Even in Seattle, the city of Boeing, uh, when you arrive in Seattle, you know that you are in the city of Boeing. Everywhere you, you can see Boeing. And the Museum of Flight, dedicated to the glory of Boeing, uh, and the Museum of Flight in Seattle has a Concorde. It is prominently displayed, and you can also get on board to visit it, as you can see. Of course, it's a British Airways <laughs> Concorde, not uh, an Air France Concorde. But they've got one, and they are very proud of it. As a conclusion, a long conclusion, Concorde was an incredible technological adventure. That's okay. But his commercial failure has not damaged his reputation. In fact, it was a very political and cultural plane, serving the French influence more than the English one, in fact, because all of the first flight, uh, uh, the first flight, Mach 1, Mach 2, uh, were in Toulouse. It was the plane of president and stars, like Georges Pompidou, you can see him there, with André Turca, the chief test pilot, uh, he just arrived in, uh, in Toulouse in 1971 on this picture. And you have this exhibit in uh, um, Saint Martin du Touche uh, Concorde factory in Toulouse, with many people from the factory and from Toulouse. Huh? It was the first uh, official presentation before the first flight. So it was the plane of president and stars, but it also enjoyed incredible popular support. It's probably the, the most well-known uh, aircraft uh, in the world. It, of course, it's, it's very easy to recognize the Concorde. Popular support, including in the United States, where Georges Pompidou landed on board in 1971 in New York. And, uh, uh, Jacques Chirac was very fond of the Concorde too, even uh, François Mitterrand, etc. Thus, and that's a little bit funny, the most left wing of the French trade unions, the CGT, Confédération Générale du Travail, the CGT, has always supported the project, the Concorde project, while FO, Force Ouvrière, another one union, more moderate, supported Airbus, the Airbus, literally. And you can say Airbus in the three languages. Uh, Airbus in French, Airbus in German, and Airbus in English. In fact, um, Concorde um, was not the right aircraft to produce uh, at this time. Passenger traffic was growing very rapidly, and air transport was becoming more democratic. At the same time, the Boeing 747 was a, a great commercial success with over 1,500 units sold. Better still, short to medium range jet airliners, such as the Airbus A300B, and then the the A320 Airbus were ordered on a massive scale, more than 15,000 in total. Because you can speak about the, uh, the family of the uh, A320. Huh? You, you have the A318, A319, A320, A321, A320 Neo, and then uh, A321 uh, uh, XLR, extra long range, the new one with uh, the, the A3 uh, 
100 B, uh, more than 15,000 in total, a thousand times more than the Concorde. In reality, the Big Co, remember the nickname of the first harvest, uh, as uh, A300B is nicknamed, has become the cash cow of European civil aviation, as Bernard Ziegler, test pilot of the A300B, puts it. So, from an economic point of view, it's better to have an ugly but efficient and profitable plane rather than a dream jet that turns out to be a financial drain. But in terms of showcasing French luxury and technology, Concorde has played its part perfectly. Thank you for your attention. And example of a party growing, testifying to the popularity of Concorde, uh, Concorde with flowers, Jonqui in the Vosges, and a growing uh, uh, about, uh, with a double jokes, l'obélix de la Concorde. Right? Uh, <laughs> you will understand this <laughs> after a short time. And uh, the, these documents are from the uh, 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 Archive Departemental de la Haute-Garonne, Departmental Archives of uh, Old Garon. This is the archive from André Turca. André Turca was a little bit an historian and uh, he, he kept everything. So we have wonderful archives in Toulouse. Thank you very much.